And we have Senator Bill Monning. Senator William W. Monning was elected November 2012 and re-elected to represent uh, the S Senate District 17, is currently the Senator, Senate Majority Leader, and he serves on budget, health, judiciary, legislative ethics, natural resources and water, and health and human services. And he's been a leading advocate uh, for reducing childhood obesity and other preventable chronic illnesses, and he was co-author of the End of Life Option Act. Thank you so much for that. was executive director and organizer of the International Physicians for the Prevention of Nuclear War, and he has a long history, which you'll be hearing more about tonight, with the United Farm Workers and their struggle for justice and equity, uh, which uh, justice and equity, which their struggle informs all of our struggles. It is at the heart of dignity for all people. Thank you for all the work you do and the heart with which you do it. Mel and, and go on down here. Um, what what is tell us a bit about your life and the struggle and why you chose to do what you did and what relevance you think that is has uh, for us today. Well, good evening, and I want to also thank the Order of America to focus a boycott that brought the growers to the table because the moral power addressed their economic <coughs> power. Um, so as we move forward. I think the first question of any organizer should be, what's the goal? What's the objective? Are we going to work to flip a congressional seat in the Central Valley? Are we going to start working towards 2020 to get Trump out of there, hopefully before? They're not mutually exclusive, but if you're going to build an organizing campaign, what is the objective? And then in building organization, social media is a great tool, but I may be old fashioned. One of the things I learned from the union is the power of house meetings, of building relationships with people who share a circumstance of disempowerment and through organizing are going to gain power. And coalitions are critical. With Mel, we built coalitions. We had a 911 system, which was Mel's house. Um, whenever there was a Rodney King verdict or a bombing of uh, the assault in Panama, bombing in Iraq. We reached out, we pulled together LULAC, uh, NAACP, National Lawyers Guild, ACLU, all the organizations that do their own organizing, have their own focus, but this is a crisis. Let's pull together. We go to the library in Salinas, we do a press release, and there'd be 15, 20 people at the front of the room representing all shades, shapes, and areas of Monterey County. And we'd speak with one voice, each organization would have their statement, um, and we were focused. We knew why we gathered for that episodic pulling together. But to get Trump out of the White House, to flip these congressional seats, or to take power in local elections, is the focus electoral. That's actually one of the easier organizing feats, because it lends itself to numbers. You know how many votes you need, and where are you going to get them? But I'll stop there. We'll open it up. But. Um, uh, Coalition building, focus, having the cause that people care about, and you speak to what they care about, and then the art and science of building your movement with numbers, targets, and accountability. So we passed legislation this year, it's not law yet, it's moving to the assembly. Sentencing laws, people with a drug conviction, simple possession, who've done their time and get arrested on another charge, if they have that prior conviction and they've done their time, a judge automatically has to add a two or three years to the sentence on the new one. And it's not, it's not negotiable, it's not um, discretionary. So we're removing that because it puts are the ones that get picked up on the streets. Um, we also just passed a bill yesterday, brought by Senator Hertzberg, I'm a co-author, to eliminate bail as we know it. Bail is what puts people in jail before trial, before conviction, and they 
sit in there and they lose their job, they learn their, lose their earning capacity, uh, and yet they don't meet the test of a flight risk or security risk. So what we're going to retool is to say, if, if you're not a flight risk and uh, you're not a security risk, you should be released pending your trial. Now, who do you think is opposing this? The bail bondsman from all over the state. And there's some guy, I don't watch TV, but there's a bounty hunter who has a dog, who's a famous dog. So he was walking around the Capitol the other day, urging people to vote against this bill because it was going to hurt his business. On the immigration front, well, one other comment. We have, since our leadership took over in the Senate, we have moved our budget ticker for the first time in 20 years, we're putting more into higher education than into the prison industrial context. Yeah. Yeah. I credit Jerry Brennan for realignment and for looking at, you know, over a majority of people in our prisons have a mental health diagnosis and they've never received mental health treatment. So what Jerry Brown and we've done with realignment is say, those folks should be getting treatment for alcohol addiction, drug addiction, mental health, that's where our dollars are better invested, is in treatment, not in terminable incarceration. And just let me close on the immigration front, because we've also, we've passed laws, uh, the sanctuary state one hasn't gotten to the governor yet, it's also in the assembly, but it basically says, it states what's the current law. Immigration laws are federal. They can be enforced by federal officers but not by city police or sheriffs. And we carve out exceptions for gang task forces and drug task forces. But what Trump has signed eliminates due process for people. And Jerry talked about families getting a guardianship for their kid. But there's another collateral damage to this. It's called toxic stress. And teachers are seeing it in classrooms. Children who are fearful that their parents may be deported, or they may be deported, or they may get separated. And it's called toxic stress. And you have it in communities where there's a lot of violence and drive-by shootings. And so kids can't concentrate. And it leads, it makes them more susceptible to illness and disease, including mental illness. So what Trump has set in motion, we haven't begun to see the total public health consequence of it. Uh, but again, I think being aware and mindful and giving voice to teachers and families who are dealing with this every day is how we empower the state legislature and others to protect the backbone of our economy. My district, the three leading employers, agriculture, hospitality, tourism, and higher education. And the first two, it's immigrant workforce. They are the backbone of our economy. We should honor them and protect them. Excellent. Thank you very much. Yeah, I would just say the, the New Deal would be a carbon-free New Deal. We just passed this week a 100% renewable energy goal by 2040, and we moved up the 50% target to 2020 from 2030. Governor Brown right now is in China, working with China. We're also going to build an alliance of states committed to the Paris Treaty on Climate. Um, I recommend a Bill McKibben op-ed in today's New York Times. We're at a tipping point, and what Trump is doing is an assault on not just our nation, but on the planet and future generations. So a carbon-free commitment, and that does lead to infrastructure investment. Uh, we've created 500,000 renewable energy jobs in California. We've created more jobs in renewable energy than all of the coal-related jobs in the country right now. And my final pillar, and there's certainly room for a lot more, would be public health promotion and building a health care system based on the promotion of health and wellness, not the treatment of illness and disease. Excellent. Thank you so much. So, do you understand that there are people that need to leave at, at 7? Please take care of yourselves. We're going to go another uh, five minutes here answering the final question and then uh, just a little uh, wrap up and thank you to the volunteers. Um, so the battles are many, and the road is long, uh, and they keep coming. You know, we look one direction and we see that uh, we're stepping out of these agreements regarding uh, with, with the rest of the world, all the two nations, uh, regarding the Paris agreements. And at the same time, 
with it's being declared an emergency that women cannot get contraception and it's being snuck in without any public discussion or debate because of the person occupying the White House now uh, declaring it an emergency. What's this emergency about women's contraception? This just happened. And sneak that in there so there's no public discourse about it while we're all scuttling over here with fire after fire after fire. It's going to be a long few years. Um, in the times when you have uh, struggled most, what have you found? What would you like to say to folks as we uh, realize that whatever I've been doing, I've got to do more. I have to lead. I have to be more agile about being a, a leader, a, a follower, or whatever I have to do. I have to do more of it. What did you find in yourself at those darkest times? Uh, and I'm not asking you to share anything that's that's too personal, but what you're willing to share that you observed or experienced when you thought, dear Lord, how am I going to do this? But I'll lead off and we'll send it around this way. Um, it's been alluded to these movements, coalitions, organizations, they can be a place for friendships and building unity and sustenance, but they can also be wrought with conflict personality disorders, um, you have to keep in mind the larger yeah. calling. Yeah. It's not about any one person's personality or individuality. It's, it's, it's for the common good. But as Jerry said, some of these struggles take forever. Some of these we may not see the dream we have in our lifetime. But in the path of building friendships, the UFW, in addition to everything it achieved, a lot of relationships came out of that. A lot of cross-cultural relationships, people with very diverse backgrounds who met in the union. And I think to Karen's question on point, the deepest, darkest, the failures, the hitting a brick wall, the frustration, you gotta take care of yourself. No cause is so important that you should run yourself into the ground because then you're no use to the cause. Um, so you gotta take care of yourself. And whatever that means, you gotta protect the time. We have a friend who worked in our coalitions, Bill Melendez, and we'd be at these meetings of the uh, Civil Rights Coalition, and we'd be looking for the next meeting, and, and Bill would have his calendar there, and he'd say, well, I have, I have a therapy appointment that morning. And we'd think, well, he's being pretty candid about it. Well, his therapy was riding his bicycle, but he blocked it out. He blocked it out on his calendar, and he just wrote therapy. And so he go meetings and he said, well, I can't, I have my therapy session. So whatever your therapy session is, put it in your calendar.